Dior, Louis Vuitton, Hennessy. Luxury, status, quality. Many of us would love to boast about owning something from these brands. But what about owning these brands? In this video, you'll learn about the man who owns them. The man who created the luxury empire, Bernard Arnold. In 2020, the net worth of Bernard Arnold for a brief moment surpassed those of Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, and Bill Gates, and in 2021 reached 200 billion. The story of the wolf in Kashmir, as he was nicknamed, is perfect for business and management courses. The richest man in Europe and the richest Frenchman, like no one else, knows the cruel rules of capitalism and big business. This video will tell you the story of Bernard. From a boy who dreamed of becoming a pianist to the fashion emperor with the reputation of a cold-blooded predator. Early Years Bernard Jean Etienne Arnold was born in France in 1949 in the small town of Roubaix. The hometown of the future billionaire was famous for its textile industries, which is curious since Louis Vuitton is one of today's best producers of fashionable clothes and accessories. Bernard's father owned a profitable civil engineering company while his mother was an accomplished pianist. Yet the biggest impact on the future trendsetter was made by his grandmother, who fostered individualism in the boy. It was through her that he learned about raw capitalism. Young Bernard made his parents proud with an exemplary school performance, and in his spare time he took piano lessons. Later, already a billionaire, Arnold confessed in one of his interviews that he had dreamed of becoming a professional pianist, but had to give up on his dream due to the lack of talent. Starting a career. After graduation, the future businessman had an injury. He broke his arm and for a while couldn't start his degree. At the age of 20, however, he was admitted to the prestigious Polytechnical School. Two years later, with a degree in engineering, he decided to join his father's business and started working for his company. There, Bernard really proved his worth. For 10 years, his sharp mind and the ambition of a true entrepreneur helped him to expand the company and keep it ahead of its competitors. But all good things come to an end. Hard times create strong men. In the early 80s, the Socialist Party came to power in France and the reforms they started placed a heavy burden on business. Bernard realized he had to act and unbeknownst to his father, he sold the engineering company. History proved it was the right thing to do. It's better to act and repent than not act and regret. Machiavelli, the Italian philosopher and politician. In 1981, Bernard moved to Florida with his first wife and two children. At the time, the U.S. construction business was booming, so Bernard had a chance to put his entrepreneurial talent to good use. With the money received from the sale of his father's company, he founded a new one that built townhouses. In four years of working in the U.S. market, the aspiring businessman managed to earn $20 million. By that time, the political regime in France had changed, so Arnold made the decision to sell his business in the U.S. and come back home. The King is Back Even though he only spent four years in the U.S., Bernard returned home with a wide experience and an array of useful business practices. Working overseas, he'd learned one lesson. In big business, there's no place for weakness and daydreaming. Arnold started analyzing the market to decide where to invest the capital that he had managed to raise. At some point, he found out that the Bosak textile conglomerate was put up for sale. The enterprise was on the verge of bankruptcy, and Bernard wasn't at all versed in the textile business. Yet to everyone's surprise, he bought the company. Back in New York, Bernard was once having a chat with a taxi driver. He learned that while the man didn't know George Pompidou, the president of France, he had heard about Christian Dior, the brand owned by the Boussac conglomerate. With an $80 million loan he took out from the Lazare Freya Venture Capital Fund and his entire capital of $15 million, Bernard bought out the company. His next goal was to become its sole owner, as luck would have it, his first wife was related to the former owners of the conglomerate, which Bernard used to persuade them to sell him their shares in the company. As the sole owner, he focused on optimizing Bosak. He sold most of the company's assets, keeping only the Christian Dior brand and the profitable Le Bon Marché department store in the center of Paris. Naturally, the next step was to downsize the business. He laid off more than 5,000 workers, 
which earned him the reputation of a cold-blooded predator. But that was just the beginning. Business Shark Once in the world of fashion, Bernard set about to create his own fashion empire. Since Arnold wasn't a daydreamer, but a rational man with a business acumen, he knew he couldn't build it from scratch. But he didn't need to, because he became the owner of the newly formed corporation Moet Hennessy Louis Vuitton, LVMH. This conglomerate already included several promising brands, such as Louis Vuitton, a manufacturer of luxury bags and suitcases, and Moet Hennessy, a premium liquor manufacturer. Analysts noted the potential of LVMH to take the leading positions in the market, but it was hindered by an overt conflict between the conglomerate's founders, Henry Rackamere and Elaine Chevalier. Bernard knew that he had to take advantage of that conflict, so he used the divide-and-conquer tactic. He arranged a secret meeting with Henry and offered to help him. Under the pretext of legally destroying their common enemy, Bernard convinced Henry to give him his shares in LVMH, Likewise, he convinced the second founder, Elaine, to give him his. As a result, Bernard managed to buy 50% of the company's shares. At one of the board meetings in 1989, uninvited, Arnold showed up to announce he now had a controlling stake and declared himself the new chairman, leaving yesterday's rivals stupefied. Once recovered from the shock, Henry Rackamer sued Arnold. He claimed that his shares had been bought fraudulently, so he wanted them back. However, the transactions were recognized as legal, and Rachemer lost the case. Taking over LVMH set the stage for the fashion empire. The businessman now set out to take control of a number of luxury brands. Billions of dollars were spent on buying top perfume brands, luxury watch and jewelry makers, and premium liquor manufacturers. In 20 years, the conglomerate made almost 100 profitable transactions. Today, LVMH includes 79 world-renowned brands, among which are Moet and Chandon, Hennessy, Don Perignon, Louis Vuitton, Kenzo, Celine, Marc Jacobs, Christian Dior, Givenchy Perfumes, Aqua di Parma, Kenzo Perfumes, and more. Legal Fights and Setbacks Bernard Arnault may have been an astute businessman, but he went through some tough times, too. One of the most dramatic stories that happened to him had to do with the Italian house of Gucci, In the early 1990s, despite all of its fame, the Italian brand was on the verge of bankruptcy. Bernard wanted to get his hands on the brand, but the owners of the company set an unreasonably high price of $400 million. Bernard was only able to buy about 34% of the company, but such a compromise couldn't do for the French fashion emperor. The company was registered in the Netherlands, so Bernard went to the Dutch court, accusing his opponents of mismanagement and demanding that the owners of Gucci should sell the remaining shares. His opponents, however, were not ready to give up without a fight. They took the bold step of issuing 20 million new shares, which reduced Bernard's stake in the company to 20%. This is when Arnold's old rival, Francois Penon, entered the game and acquired 40% of the Gucci shares. Bernard tried to protest the deal, but the court did not take his side. In 2012, a scandal erupted when the popular French newspaper Liberation had Bernard's photo on the front page and a caption that read, Get lost, you rich bastard. The caption was clearly a reference to the scandal around a close friend of the French billionaire, Nicolas Sarkozy. During his tenure, the president was visiting the Paris International Agricultural Show, where a man refused to shake his hand. Unable to hold back his anger, the president replied, Get lost, you poor bastard. The reason for the screaming headline was the fact that Arnold applied for Belgian citizenship. At the time, the French government was looking to impose a 75% tax rate on earnings above 1 million euros per year. Journalists saw Bernard's escape as an attempt to avoid taxes and deemed him a traitor. As soon as the newspaper came out, LVMH representatives brought a lawsuit against Liberation. The court ordered the publishing company to apologize to the billionaire and pay him compensation for moral damages family, wealth, and principles. Although the richest man in Europe regularly appears on the glossy covers of magazines, he doesn't like the limelight and says that happiness loves silence. Collecting works of art is what he calls his passion. The private collection of the billionaire includes works by Pablo Picasso, Andy Warhol, Mariusio Catalan, Damien Hirst, and others. The exact number of exhibits is kept secret but journalists have no doubt there are plenty. 
Arnold is also the owner of two palaces in the suburbs of Paris, Indigo Island in the Bahamas, and a luxury villa in St. Tropez. The businessman has got a BMW X7 for taking rides around the city and his own Dassault Falcon 7X business jet. Unlike many other famous billionaires, such as Elon Musk or Mark Zuckerberg, Bernard never appears in the office wearing jeans or a t-shirt. He always has a suit made from one of his own brands. Bernard is famous for his discipline and principles. In business, he relies on his family. At first, he was supported by his father, and now it's his children he involves in the business. For Bernard, it's important that his children start from the bottom. In their teens, all his kids worked as errand boys and clerks in LVMH stores. Interestingly, Arnold demands formality from everyone. None of his relatives or close friends are on a first-name basis with the billionaire. Conclusion Critics like to say that the businessman is mediocre, pointing out that he didn't create any of his own brands. He often comes under attack for his American gangster style in business and his policy of all is fair in war and business. What's out of question, however, is his management skills. Whether to judge him or not is up to you. But if you're taking your first steps as a businessman, the story and principles of this billionaire could serve you as a good lesson. What do you think? Stop dreaming. Act. Bernard Arnold, French billionaire. 